Hello and welcome to this edition of Wealth Track. I'm Consuelo Mack. How prepared are you financially for the big switch from getting a regular paycheck from work to creating your own paycheck in retirement? If you're already in retirement, how is it going? Well, a recent T. Rowe Price study of baby boomers and Gen Xers with investable assets of at least $50,000 found that 47% of them feel their ideal retirement is very attainable. Another 45% say it is somewhat attainable. Other studies find similar levels of optimism about retirement, but it turns out that confidence might be misplaced. A financial literacy survey by the American College of Financial Services, the nation's largest nonprofit educational institution devoted to financial services, found that financial literacy about retirement planning is poor, even among the more affluent. In its survey of individuals between the ages of 60 and 75 with household assets of at least $100,000, excluding their primary residence, only 20% scored 61% or better in a basic financial literacy test. That means 80% had failing grades. The survey covered topics such as ability to maintain lifestyle, life expectancy, income generation, social security, and company-sponsored retirement plans. And it's not just individuals who need to be educated. The American College of Financial Services has created a new program and certification for financial advisors called the Retirement Income Certified Professional Designation, or RICP, which specializes in retirement income planning because this is a relatively new territory for professionals too. Jamie Hopkins is one of the creators of the RICP curriculum. He is a chair in insurance and investments at the college, is an associate professor of taxation there, and is co-director of its Center for Retirement Income. Investment News named him one of the top 40 financial service professionals under the age of 40. The biggest financial challenge for the 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day until 2030 and their advisors is transitioning from accumulating assets to turning those assets into income. They say it takes a completely different mindset. In addition to your savings that, that you have, your traditional savings, the stocks and bonds that we were just talking about, you've got to think of other assets, of how to use other assets that you might have. And one of them was your home. Housing has to be considered. It's America's okay. largest asset. Right. Right. It's more than the stocks and bonds. Now, how do you the, monetize that? Right. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, a line of credit is one. And just use a straight line of credit. And there's some downsides to that. They can get canceled and, and things like that. So it might not necessarily be there when you need it. Now, the reverse mortgage, they've changed a lot. It's not the reverse mortgage of 10 years ago. Right. Uh, the regulations in about the last two years have significantly changed the product, brought some of the costs down. They were a very expensive product. But what you see is if you incorporate this as part of portfolio management, that, and I'll give a very simple mm -hmm. example here, is stock market go back to 2009, and we're withdrawing money from that portfolio to meet our needs, and it drops 30 or 40 percent. Do I want to take money out of my portfolio when it's down 40 percent or borrow from my house at four, four and a half, five percent? Actually, that's a very easy decision. Right. Um, the math, you, you, you'll never convince me otherwise, the math is better. And so the idea with reverse mortgages today is if you're willing to age in place, you want to live in your house, which most Americans do, that you set up the reverse mortgage early, that line of credit. Now, you don't tap into it. I'm not encouraging one to go age 62, go and pull it all out. But it's you set it up so it's there. So if the market drops, you already have it set up. And you can now use that asset instead of your stocks. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you can pay it back. And you can pay it back just like a traditional mortgage. And the interest is even deductible, just like a traditional mortgage. So we actually have people and financial planners using this now and really just treating it as what we say is a non-market correlated asset. That we set up the reverse mortgage, we only draw from it in years after the, the markets went down. And in some cases, that might be the first three years of retirement because that's actually the biggest risk period. Right. So there's other strategies. Some people hold bonds, and they use that purely for the first couple years or cash set aside. But this can be another option for kind of that cash buffer strategy for the first couple years in retirement. At the close of every wealth track, we try to give you one suggestion to help you build and protect your wealth over the long term. This week's action point is develop an alternative retirement income source to tap in the event of a significant market decline. 
As our guest pointed out, you might want to use other sources of income to avoid drawing down your investments during bear markets. Some alternatives you can do in advance involving your home are setting up a home equity line of credit or a reverse mortgage line of credit when conditions are favorable to use when they are not.